change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden. Today, I'm going to bring you into a conversation I'm having with a friend who's having some challenges running. And we're gonna tease out some tips, tricks, tools, and tactics to help you when you are stuck and don't wanna run. So you're telling me that you're having a hard time getting out to do your run. So I have a question. What dimension of that running experience is it that's difficult for you? Is it the physical dimension, like your body doesn't feel good, like you got up this morning and you're tired or your legs ache or your back hurts or maybe you're sick? So we've got that dimension, the physical dimension. My body is communicating that it really doesn't want to move vigorously. Is it time pressure? You feel that you just don't have enough time. Maybe you've got to be at work in an hour and you're thinking, oh, geez, is it worth it to go out there for 20 minutes? Um, I'm going to have to come home and shower. I'm going to be in a rush. I'd rather not rush before I go to work. Is it what most people would call lack of willpower or mental strength or discipline where it's just easier to stay on the couch? It's easier to surf Facebook. It's easier to watch YouTube videos. And yeah, I know I should run, maybe later, I don't want to. So we procrastinate or we're just scared. For whatever reason, we're, we're scared of getting out there. And something that I realized today, another dimension that I didn't even realize was, uh, was part of this, showed up for me today. And this may be something you want to consider as well. Cognitive overwhelm or... Another way to put it is fear of making decisions or decision fatigue. For instance, uh, when I went out to run today, I was really tired. So physically, I was getting that message. Uh, My body just didn't want to move much. I don't really have a willpower issue because that's not something that I work with. I don't will myself to run. I just engage in a process. But what I did discover today was that as I was running up the hill towards the monument here in town, it was really slow going and I thought, okay, I'll go to the monument, run around it and come back and it'll be a little over two miles and, and that'll be good and maybe during the run I'll feel better and I can renegotiate because the person that made the decision and the person that's starting the run is not the same person that's now a mile and a half into the run because I'm now in a different circuitry in my brain so I have different experiences of my body and even different experiences of my capabilities. Uh, and emotions. I have different emotions available, different feelings available, because I've moved into different uh, neural circuits in my brain just by being physically active. Getting out of a seated position changes where you are in your brain and gives you new capabilities. So a mile and a half in, I'm thinking, okay, I can renegotiate. If I want to do more, I can decide to turn left instead of right, and suddenly I'm adding to the run, and then I come to another intersection. I have a choice, left or right left. Ooh, I've just added another quarter mile to the run. And I often do that. I call these negotiation runs. But what I realized today was I had more energy in me. As I got to the monument and ran around it and started heading back, I thought, I know I can do more. Physically, I'm capable of doing more, but I don't want to run on any streets that I haven't already run on. And this is really fascinating to me. So as I'm heading down the hill, and it's a big hill. It's about a 300-foot climb from my studio to the monument. As I'm heading down the hill, I thought, what if I turn around at the bottom and I run back up the hill again to the monument? So I double the hill. I climb it twice. And that didn't sound bad. That sounded like, yeah, I can do that. But the idea of turning right instead of heading down the hill turning right would have been flat ground all the way to the hospital and then I would have run downhill very very gradually from the hospital and then very downhill gradually back to my studio which would have been almost four miles but running gradually downhill for an additional two miles really didn't sound appealing to me my brain chose to turn around and run uphill that was the easier choice So as I'm processing this and I'm trying to figure it out, why is uphill easier than downhill? I realized that my brain didn't want to have to make any decisions. It didn't want to bring in new data, new information, new streets, new decision points. 
It just wanted to run without thinking about any decisions. So it wasn't so much that the physicality of the effort was the challenge for me. It was that my brain, my cognitive brain, was really struggling, and it just didn't have the ability to make any more decisions. If you want to run more, that's fine, but please don't give me any more decisions to make. So by turning around and running on the same road, that's uh, no longer a novel experience. I don't have to be on the lookout, because your brain is always on the lookout in a new environment. Even if it's an environment that you know quite well, it's still brand new today. So there's more processing that goes on in novel environments. Whereas if you're on the treadmill, and I'm not a fan of treadmill running at all, but now I get it to a degree. People that run on treadmills don't have to make any decisions. They're just running. So they've taken the cognitive element out of the equation. I don't have to think about where I'm going to run or what I might interact with. I'm not processing the run in that way. I process it in other ways. And often I'll find myself running to the monument and then just lapping the monument, just running around and around and around and around because my brain has said, I don't want to make any more decisions. Yes, we could run down other places and we could get the same distance, but I don't want to make any decisions right now. So just keep running. And then at some point, I'll tell you when I'm done doing circles around the monument, and then we can go home, and that's what happens. And then I'll look at my watch, and it's like, wow, I ran three miles just around the monument. So this is something that I'm really tuning into, and it's something that I think is important to address. When you're challenged, when you're having a hard time going or staying in the run, which dimension of discomfort is it that's the obstacle? Is it physicality? Is it this desire to will yourself to run like I have to, but your body's like, mm, I really don't want to? Or is it cognitive overload? The brain's like, body, do whatever you want, just don't involve me. And again, this is where a treadmill can be, I think, a good tool. Uh, and I'm realizing that now for the first time because you can just cognitively tune out. You don't have to worry about traffic. You don't have to worry about decisions. You don't, don't have to worry about slippery sidewalks like I did today. You're just running. That's it. You don't need to think. So tune into that the next time you're struggling and find out which dimension of this experience is the challenge occurring. Because you might find out that just by tweaking how you're viewing that run or how you modify that run, you're going to get much more energy available to you. Because if I decided that I need to run on different streets to make the run longer, I probably just would have turned around and gone home because that wasn't appealing to me. So it would have been a, a two-mile run instead of a four-mile run. Because when it comes to making that decision, my brain's going to say, no, I don't want novelty right now. Uh, and this is only something that I'm realizing because I spend a lot of time tuning in. I spend a lot of time asking myself questions and really being present. And after all this time of running for me, I'm finally getting this today that one of my obstacles or challenges is decision fatigue. So tune in next time you run and see if that is something that you can play around with, uh, extending your run and reducing decision fatigue at the same time. If anything in this video spoke to you, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you have questions, I'd love to answer them in a future video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you really like the content that I create, come on over to Patreon. Your support there makes a big difference and allows me to continue creating content for you. All right, peace out.